Yep, two of you nailed it in the last video's comments. I did go back in the machine shop for another cylinder head episode. We're about to install some valves and springs. I'm using Kigley Beehive valve springs and their spring installed specification is 97 pounds at 1 and 440 thousandths of an inch. Those are the kinds of specifications you pass on to your machinist, and those are the goals that they would try to shoot for. Your stem height is determined by your valve job, but additional work is usually required in order to fit aftermarket springs. There may be variations between parts or differences in the valve seats that prevent you from nailing the recommended specification. The goal here is to make the valve spring pressures and spring heights as uniform and as close as possible to the installation specifications. I rely on my machinist for this kind of work because I don't own most of these tools. I don't have an inventory of shims or any milling equipment in case any of these parts require modification to fit. Stuart sent eight spring seats off to be cut and he's going to explain what it takes to get your valve train specifications in order. He was very gracious letting us into his busy schedule to share this part of the assembly. So we're going to start by doing spring installed height. There are several methods of doing spring installed height. One of which is using a conventional snap gauge, which you would stick your valve into your head, stick your keepers and your retainers on your valve, and then use this to measure from the spring seat to the bottom of the retainer. Uh, unfortunately, on this style head, it's very difficult to get in there and use this type. There's another type that's a collar type spring height gauge, which I don't have right now. You would install your valve. Then you would flip the adjustable collar over top. You would install your keepers in the retainer onto the valve and then adjust out the, the collar type micrometer that would bottom out against the retainer and give you an effective installed height. Very difficult to use on this type also. Nearly impossible to use, at least on your end positions because of lack of room. Too tight. Too tight. So the method we're gonna be using, we're just gonna be using, using the uh, effective tip height minus our spring seat thickness and the distance from the bottom of our retainer to our tip. We're just going to do the math, um, kind of uh, some backwards engineering. We're going to start by measuring from the spring side of the retainer to the tip height. We're about 330 thousandths and that's once again from the spring side of our retainer to the tip height. At that point what we're going to do with our valves installed in the cylinder head, we're going to take our tip height gauge we're going to zero it to the tip height of the valve that we're measuring. That's zeroed. So with the big hand on the zero and the little hand between the four and the five, we're then going to remove that because that's zeroed to our tip height. We'll then take our depth mic. We're going to use it to duplicate that tip height on the head, which is sometimes a little clumsy. So now we have our, our depth mic set to set the stem height gauge to the same height of the valve. We'll then measure that, which will give us one inch, 939 thousandths. We'll check each valve to get the exact stem height on each one of those. So what we have here, we have measured up all of our intake stem heights, and that's measured from the tip of our valve to the spring seat on the cylinder head, not including the hardened spring seat. We range from one inch, 943, all the way down to 1 inch 935. Uh, we have a 1 inch 950. So uh, under 10 thousandths, well, I guess about 15 thousandths worth of variance in our tip height. These are added in up here with the correction dimension, being that we're having to do our spring installed height based off of a tip height. Mm -hmm. You have to factor in that you need, with your tip height, you're, you're measuring from the tip of your valve to your spring seat and then subtracting out your retainer to tip height which is 330, and then subtracting out the thickness of your spring seat, which was 153. So from your tip height, you subtract 483 thousandths, which gives you your effective spring installed height, including your retainer and your spring seat, which gives you this dimension right here. That can then be corrected, depending on whether you need to add or subtract height. If you need to add more tension to your spring, you would add a shim. And these come in different th differing thicknesses, 15 thousandths, 30 thousandths, 60 thousandths, 80 thousandths. Some companies will manufacture them in 5 and 10s. Most common are 15s, 30s, and 60s. And that would go underneath your spring seat. If you needed to take away spring installed height, uh, meaning decrease spring tension, you could get a thinner spring seat. You could get offset keepers. You could alter your, your, your valve installed height by possibly altering your valve job, meaning sinking this surface a little bit, which isn't recommended because it affects flow. 
um, or changing springs, which is the most difficult. Yep, but I gotta use them. Gotta use them. So we're gonna do a couple of tricks today for this, and you already uh, sent eight of those off to be cut down. Yeah, we did on the on our exhaust side. We were too tight. We were coming up with a spring installed height of one millimeter too tight. And what we're gonna do to change that is we're gonna cut one millimeter off the bottom of our spring seat, therefore um, giving us a taller spring installed height and getting our pressure corrected. Awesome. Well, thank you, sir. Appreciate the detailed explanation. Absolutely. Now we've measured up our exhaust side for spring installed height. And what we've come up with is on average of about one millimeter too tight, meaning we would have too much spring tension. On our exhaust side, we're, met, we're coming up with 36 millimeter. Our target installed height is 37. So as you can see, with a one millimeter short installed height, our target spring pressure is right at about 98 to 100 pounds. Um, one millimeter short, we're coming in at about 110 to 115. And this so, is the exhaust side? This is on the exhaust side. Okay. So what we're going to do to lighten that spring pressure up is machine down, machine down the thickness of the spring seat, cut, they measure about 109 thousandths, uncut, they measure about 154 and a half, 155 thousandths. So we'll go back, we'll do a little bit of math and see how much of a change that gives us. And if necessary, we'll do some additional modifications to correct our spring installed height. I got, I got, I got. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back and we're gonna recheck our spring installed height at Right now we have a high ball of 1 inch 464 and a low ball of 1 inch 4, that should be 53, 452, so we'll check it by our tightest installed height, and that will bring us right to about 100 pounds. Yay! So at that point we're going to do some minor shimming, we're going to put uh, maybe one or two quarter millimeter shims in there. Uh, just to bring our lighter springs up above our set tension because we always like to be a little bit higher than lower uh, And then we'll start the installation process of the valves and springs Next step we're going to do we're going to install the valve seals There's two different ways you can do it You can go out and purchase a nice valve seal installer like this one Which comes with several different collars for all types of different seals Several different pilot sizes for different stem sizes uh, This is one method Of course we have a nice quality Viton seal uh, this being the intake seal. Unfortunately, we found that this type of tool, uh, sometimes we can damage the guide with this pilot. Um, also, because you can't see the seal, sometimes when you drive it in, the spring will get bent because it'll get hung up on that lip. So our preferable method is actually to use just a good old Craftsman nut driver. You'll just want to find the size where the spring in this of the seal just barely slips in there. It'll hold it in place so it won't fall off. You just want to line it up and just tap it on. All right. And we'll do that for the rest of the intake and then move over to the exhaust side. Um, sometimes different seal manufacturers will require a different uh, size seal installer. So you just need to find the one that fits. We have our valve laid out one to eight intake and exhaust. So we'll just take them one by one. We'll wipe them clean, dip them in some nice royal purple racing oil, and rotate them around to get the lube spread out through the gun, and slide them on it. We're going to demonstrate how to use valve stem sleeves during installation. Sleeves hold the seal open so that the groove for the keepers don't snag or tear the lip of the valve stem seals when you insert the valves. On a lot of domestic cars, the grooves for the keepers are straight cut, making those edges sharp. Those are the ones you have to use valve stem sleeves with, but you don't have to use them on a Mitsubishi. So we're content with our exhaust install, uh, spring installed height, which we modified by cutting the base of the spring seat. So we're going to go ahead and set all of those down in there, making sure that we get all of the modified ones on the exhaust side. Our intake side, we had a couple that we needed to correct. Um, so the ones that we're content with, we'll go ahead and install our unmodified spring seats. 
Alright, so the, the two installed heights we're going to correct, we're going to correct them by installing a valve spring shim. Fortunately, we only had the two that we needed to correct, and they were only off by a quarter of a millimeter. So we'll just put our spring seats down in there, and then we'll move over to spring installation. All that's left now is to complete the assembly. This is the easy part if you have the right tools for the job. The more expensive the tool, typically the easier the job gets. This appears to be a decommissioned drill press with the valve spring compressor bit in the chuck, and a pivoting floating pneumatic table that lets you pivot the head on axis with the machine and center the valve stem with the chuck on the drill press. Simple, effective, no need to even turn this thing on. All that's needed is the leverage to compress the springs, really, but being able to lock the chuck in position certainly helps when you're installing the keepers. They love to pop out and go flying across the room at will, even with this kind of equipment. The keepers are tapered, and they fit inside of a tapered hole on the retainer. With the assistance of nearly 100 pounds of valve spring pressure, that taper provides all the force necessary to keep the retainer and keepers assembled on the end of the valve stem. According to the math, we could not nail 97 pounds of pressure at 1 and 440 thousandths of an inch, but the spring tester said we had 100 pounds at a slightly larger 1 and 452 thousandths. So regarding the spring pressure, we're safe. We're only able to get within 12 thousandths of an inch on the spring height measurement. Nobody makes shims that small, and unless you spend a small fortune remachining all of your parts or modifying your shims, then that's as close as you're ever going to get it. Machine shops charge an hourly fee, and if they get your valves within the smallest shim size, that's all they're going to do to it. 12 thousandths is less than the thickness of three sheets of notebook paper, and will not have enough of an impact on your seat pressure to make a difference. Your typical valve job won't be any closer than that, but that should at least be your minimal goal, within the smallest shim value. But if you can't make it perfect, it's best to err on the tighter side of the spring installed height spec. Keep the sheet that all the math was done on. That becomes part of your blueprint. If you ever have problems with the parts you install, it's good to have the numbers to reference in your troubleshooting process. We'll install the cams and double check our clearances later during the engine assembly, but this is one of the procedures you must scrutinize prior to then in order to do the job right. Let's recap the 4G63 valve and spring assembly process. First you insert the valve into the head and zero the stem height gauge against the machine bore for the spring seat. Next you use a depth micrometer and measure to zero to get your stem height. This value is largely determined by your valve job. Repeat these two measurements on all 16 valves and write down your results. On all 16 stem height values, subtract the depth of the retainer spring seat to the tip of the valve and subtract the thickness of the lower spring seat to determine your actual spring installed height. Cut the seats to size or use shims to correct for the specified spring installed height. Once you're satisfied with the results, assemble the valve train. Nobody makes aftermarket parts that bolt in correctly without this kind of attention because of variations from one head to the next. No two cylinder heads are exactly the same. Failing to get as close as possible to the recommended specifications can result in loose leaky valves or a catastrophic binding of the valve train. It's your responsibility to make sure your parts play well together, that these variables are correct, and now you know how to measure them all to make them fit. If you don't have the tools or you don't do this yourself, at least this video takes the mystery out of the process. Please feel free to share this with your friends or to correct my grammar, spelling, or terminology in the comments. I always like that because it means you're paying attention and you know the subject material. Thank you all for spending your time here on Jaffermobile, and until the next episode, stay tubed.